is the anal, right? Yeah. Uh, let me know when you're going to make the noise to sync it up. Yeah, go for it. Is it oh, playing? wait, wait. It's not even recording. Is it playing? That's recording? This is not. I should get all my farts out. <laughs> <laughs> what a sweet little fart you just did. <laughs> I, hold the, I hold in so many farts on my word. Ready? Okay. Should I sync it up? That's when I fart the most, yeah. Maybe a little louder. Give me a louder one. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you go a little? I heard the echo. I heard the echo. That was loud enough. Yeah, okay. Cool, so we're on. So, how long have you guys known each other? Because, uh, I mean, you guys have been friends for a long time. Yeah, right? since we were like 12. Yeah, I don't remember. His remember. first day in the sixth grade, um, he, like, he was dropped off at the office by his parents or whatever. Yeah. And then... Abandoned? The teacher. <laughs> He's Harry Potter. Only I was so lucky. <laughs> He's yeah. Arizona's Harry Potter. <laughs> Dude, there you With go. no magic. I don't need that fucking pressure. One of these days. <laughs> Put that on me. A different kind of magic he brings to the table. Okay, let's find out. <laughs> His sleeves are full of endless, colorful cloth. Oh, I thought, I thought you said sleeves. No, these ones. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so like... The teacher of our class said, asked me to go to the front office and bring the new kid back, and it was Zach. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was my first day in public school. I transferred from a, like, a really weird charter school where we, like, didn't have desks. We, like, sat in circles. I don't, it was, like, like some cult shit, honestly. Like, cool. it was weird. Crazy. Yeah, and I'm like, what the, what the hell is, and I, like, I'd never read a textbook before. It was very disorienting. Did you understand that at the time, or was it, like, I, he didn't speak English at the time. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Zorbon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't know. It was weird. But I was like, Colin school. Like, that kid's school is fucking tall too. <laughs> it's like as tall as the teachers. The same, like, same height as he is now, but in sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Full beard tattoo. <laughs> hey, this way. Hi, my name's Colin. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. No, that's crazy, man. Yeah, since we're twelve. Twelve yeah. or eleven. Like twelve. You guys like seeing the same school still system? Like, yeah, we went to great. We finished grade school together, and then we went to high school together, and we saw each other at GCC every once in a while. Yeah, we took piano together. That was. Oh yeah, we did. At yeah. GCC, is that the only class we took together? I feel like there was one other one, but maybe not. I don't remember. We only had like one class together in high school, even. Yeah. Remember? No, we had two. We had a. Uh, the cat, What's that called? Like the Human- cat, yeah, humanities, yeah, and then yeah. the the police one, or not police, but the law one, or whatever. Oh yeah, what's that called? I don't remember. Right. One one. It, they, was, it was the freshman year and senior year we had a class together, and that was it. Yeah, we sure. had different interests. How oh, like you took all like the programming classes from our and Bram were like doing game design. Oh yeah, yeah. you did game design really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we took me and Brandon took this one program class. It wasn't a game design class, but later on. There actually was a game development class offered at high school, and I took the first iteration of it. Cool. Which is interesting. What's the narwhal game you guys made? I made it, yeah. <laughs> you oh, really? Yeah, I made a, a narwhal game. Like, you know that game where, like, there's a, a spaceship at the bottom, and it shoots shit as it comes down? Yeah. It's like Galaga. Copy <laughs> Yeah, yeah I just made my own version of that, but you're a narwhal shooting, like, missiles into the sky or something. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was cool. You were very proud of it. I remember, like, I was, I was so even in that it. class, and, like one day, like after school, you're like, you got to come check out this fucking game. Cool. It, it was funny because there was a kid in the class who took it very serious, and he was very good. And he, by the end of the class, he made like a legit RTS. And it was pretty rad. And I made a narwhal game. Fucking use the school resources, Colin. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was fun, honestly. Yeah. That's cool. I learned how difficult all that is. I mean, I learned I couldn't do any of it, but I learned. How difficult it would be for people. You like do just enough to know, like, I'm never gonna I, yeah, I learned, I learned yeah. enough to see how difficult it is to make a game. Yeah. And I'm sure I saw the like the bare bones of how hard it actually is. I'm sure it's so much harder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Code is insane. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of games have like teams of people and shit, right? Yeah, so it's got, yeah, it's they work way more expensive. Yeah. They work nutty hours. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. and they don't get paid, they're overworked. And, like, they're like yeah. tech slaves. Yeah, Damn, yeah. Sucks. I was reading a uh, article about it recently, and it was talking about how like game developers basically like exploit the fact that like people love video games so much to get people to like take really shitty salaries and horrible hours because they're like 
they're doing what they love, yeah. right? So they're, wow. they totally, like, exploit these fucking people. Um, and apparently at Epic Games, because of, like, the success of Fortnite, it's been, that's been, like, a hyper case where, like, employees are, like, getting fucking burnt out. Like, it's really bad. Yeah, that, that, that's crazy. Like, yeah, because Fortnite got huge fast, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, and they, like, refuse to hire enough, like, programmers and people to, like, sure. maintain the game. The guy that um, created Fortnite, like, basically overnight became, I think he's the 17th richest person in the world. So That's crazy, dude. Which, it's kind of funny because he's been in the video game industry for a long time. I mean, I could, I'm pretty sure this is right, but he created um, um, Unreal Tournament and all that. Okay. Like, oh, he, nice. Or at least he was on the development team of that back in the day, of, like, the beginning of Epic Games. Yeah. And then he either created Fortnite or he was, like, one of the biggest people involved with it or whatever. Yeah, now he's one of the richest people. Super. Like, Notch, who, like, sold Minecraft for, like, a fucking billion dollars or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Is Minecraft still big like that? Like, do people oh, yeah. Still... Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, like, coming back, too. Like, a lot of people are just, like, it just, just got, beca- like, became popular again. Yeah. So it's, like, some big streamers and YouTubers. Because well, we're in the age of, like, nostalgia and all that. That's yeah. Crazy. People our age, a little younger than us, grew up on uh, Minecraft. Yeah. Because Minecraft came out when I was... When we were in high school? Yeah, like, I have, like, vivid memories of, like, me and Brandon bringing over, fuck, like, shitty yeah. MacBooks. And, we, like, <laughs> me, you, and him, like, we all sat at your table in your room and we just play fucking Minecraft all night yeah. just for, like, hours. Like, wow. order pizza and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Minecraft? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's funny because back then, it was, that was during the beta, or the alpha or whatever of Minecraft. It was before I it was, it was yeah. pre-release. We bought out for, like, five bucks. And now you have to pay, like, $60 yeah. for it, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And another thing is... Uh, multiplayer didn't exist in it then. We just sat there. <laughs> <and everybody, laughs> we were just hanging out. We were just hanging out. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. We'd be like, look what I made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds like fun, though. Cool. And nowadays in Minecraft, I think, like, or no, definitely, I've seen it in, like, they have, like, creative modes yeah. where you have, like, infinite of whatever kind of blocks so you can make shit easily. But yeah. back then, you had to, like, you had to get your own resources. <laughs> right, you know? Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's crazy. It's fucking when Minecraft was a real video game. <laughs> <laughs> I no, just bows down to the little kids. It's like such a niche thing to be a snob about. Like, I played Minecraft <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, I never played Minecraft. I think I like downloaded it on my PS3 at one point, and I was like, I'm gonna do this. And then, like a week later, I was like, Man, it's probably for the best. Like I, would, yeah. I don't think I could ever play it again. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't look, yeah. I don't it was care. a game of its time for me. Yeah. I was really into Fortnite for a minute. Like, were you? Oh yeah, like, really? really bad. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm still very into Fortnite. I would be too. But yeah, I just don't have time for it. Right I've now. only ever yeah. like I've only yeah, ever enjoyed right. one thing for Fortnite. That one. Uh, the the one shot. Yeah. Game mode. There's a or... special game mode on it that would because I used to play with him and our friend Lee uh-huh. and his girlfriend and um, I don't like Fortnite. Um, we well, don't like shooting games, right? No, oh, I love shooting games. Oh really? Yeah, but I don't like. Fortnite. He doesn't like build. He doesn't like the building in it. That's nice. Um, yeah. Oh, because you play Counter Strike, right? Not anymore, but yeah, I played yeah. a shitload. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah, there was one game mode on it where, because they would have like weekly events or whatever. Yeah. And it was this one that we would all play. I fucking loved it because it was low gravity, so like you would jump and go far. And yeah. it was only snipers, and they have this one called, is it the hunting rifle? Yeah. Where you don't really zoom in in a scope, it's just your screen kind of just like enhances. Yeah. And you zoom in. And it's just like a bolt action rifle. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, I have decent aim. And then I'd just be flying around the map just shooting people. <laughs> I'd get like 15 kills. Yeah, dude, you fucking crazy, like the. Dude. Yeah, like because you play like Counter Strike and have like those pro fucking like Reflexes. keyboard and mouse. Yeah, like yeah. aim skills. Just yeah, to be clocking people, kids. You will get 15 kills a game. <laughs> like <laughs> ever. Yeah, it was. It but was, like, uh, and also because it was like of the. The gravity they have in that game, or the anti gravity mode. Yeah. People don't really build in it, and since I hate, oh, so that's, that's the thing I hate about it. the game is the building. I fucking that's hate it. It's just not for me, but because people don't build in that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hiding pussies. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it. yeah, using the mechanics of the game to your advantage. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking if I recognize it, that I mean, an idiot when I say that, I can say it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. It is fucking annoying. But it's, also, I'm not, like, shitting on the game. It's a very well-made game. It's just not. Yeah. It's just not for me. 
because of that one aspect. Yeah. And it's kind of a bummer because I would like to have like half of the game with it. Yeah. yeah, the major thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, like the core, like you making the forts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do that. I know it's frustrating too because like no matter how how much I improve in my building, there's just always people who are better than me. So it's always fucking frustrating. Like no matter how good you get. Because, you know, like, we're working, we got shit going on. Like, there's teenagers who are on summer break who just play 14 <laughs> hours a fucking day. You can't yeah. keep up with no, that. You can't. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. There's just, there's no fucking way. Plus, their minds are not stressed from, like, work and stuff, too. Yeah. So it's not just, like, the time. It's yeah, like, they're not yeah. sitting like, oh, I should be doing something more productive on this wasting my fucking life playing this goddamn video game, you know? Like, <laughs> shit, so I have to go to the bed in four hours, I have to get up tomorrow. Is this <laughs> is this really <laughs> yeah. fucking... No, they're just like... No school. Mom! Have you seen a commercial where that kid, like, calls his grandma for a soda? Uh-uh. She's like, yeah. And he's, like, in a different... He's in the same house, and, like, the grandma get Like, he calls the grandma, I guess, at the house. And then she's, like, getting up all old and shit. And then she just... She gets the phone. He's like, hey, grandma, can you give me a soda? <laughs> he's just, like... <laughs> he's just, like, creaking, like, like, through the house, dude. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people think, like, millennials are, yeah. like, just like... Yeah, I hear it oh. all day at work. Yeah. Why? Because I work with an older generation. Uh -huh. They buy into this idea that, like, generational politics means anything. It gives them, like, a false sense of superiority, right? Like, they can just complain, like, this whole generation of people is a certain way, which is, like, total bullshit, right? right. Like, there's just as much variation... Of people in our generation, there wasn't their very like generation. Probably even more, you know, because there's information, there's more information. Yeah, you can yeah. Be whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you know? and like I'm pretty proud to like think that like our generation is like, like the best educated, like most open minded, most tolerant. You know, like I don't hear a lot of millennials like spouting off like anti Semitic shit. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. That's true. We're, yeah. That's what's scary about the world. You never know which way it's gonna like peek over to, you know? Cause like, I mean, anything could happen, really. But like, like I don't know. I didn't think people my age would be as weird as they are. But so I think it's people. just every. I mean, it's kind of like how you said every generation has their own shit. People, every generation has their own high yeah. up people. <laughs> Do you think that's gonna be different? The like the more ev evolution, uh, technology, like grows like because the faster things get the more that there is to like fuck with i guess like do you think there's going to be a bigger diversity of things going on or do you think people are going to meld back into like one kind of thing does that make sense mm, i don't know <laughs> i don't know because because like i said like i was talking to a teenager which sounds so weird to say like, i know we're adults <laughs> i know <laughs> fuck I, just, I just heard what right? said and i was like i'm talking to this te like 19 year old and i'm like this fucking teenager <laughs> <laughs> teenage bitch <laughs> 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 no but she was like uh she was covering a shift at my house and so we just like started talking and uh like i well this is unrelated but she was like i mean i did the math because you know like i went to school no <laughs> i was like damn so you were born like pre or like around 9 11 like you didn't know like, she just doesn't know what the world was like before that. And it was so weird to be like, I know what it was like. <laughs> and then I saw it, like, I watched it on TV and shit, and then, like, the world was different. Like, that's so crazy to uh, think. Like, how... how it's true. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird, right? Like It's like a night and day difference. Yeah, a big... Like, I remember going to school, like, I didn't, I didn't give a shit about it at the moment, because I was a kid. But then, like, going to school, and then it, like, kind of hits you, and, like, more people are talking about it and shit. Yeah, and it was like... Super harsh security stuff everywhere. And it's yeah, like almost overly. Yeah, style. yeah, it's wild. So, um, there's this guy John Preisner. He's an organizer with, or no, it's Mike Preisner. They're brothers. They like, whatever. Uh, he uh, took a trip to North Korea, and he talked about you know like there he they had all these expectations that it would be like you know harsh police state. There'd be all this security, all this paranoia, and he's like. Uh, the airport there was super fucking chill. He's like, you know when it felt like I was going into a police state was when I came back and went through like fucking airport security in the United States. Yeah. And they were quite, they like, they saw that I just come from North Korea. They were like questioning me in the fucking <laughs> back room, like holding me, like treating me like a terrorist. And like, that's when I fucking felt like I was going to a police state was coming to the United States. Yeah. That's when I yeah. felt like people were watching me. 
Is it's there, crazy is, to think about. Is there several accounts of people going to North Korea and saying similar things? Yeah, yeah. Because I always wonder, I remember you saying that to me the other week, and I was, I was wondering if, like, like it's just a, a, a facade they put it, on for people. I that mean... It's, that it's, like, low security? Like, no, like, that it's, like, nice and... No, yeah. I mean, um, so, I, okay, so, like, we can get into North Korea, because, like, this is something, I like, I'm, I'm not an expert on right now a little bit. Uh, if you guys want sure, to. yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Really quick, the, I, I you know, know, you know that, Robin. huh? I just know Dennis Rodman went there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that movie, um, the interview? Yeah, with oh. James Franco. Yeah, and they went to North Korea. So they, they, they were driving there. past, like, they're, like, kind of being shown around. It was all nice and stuff. But then, like, they're driving past that one uh, grocery store and he wanted to go in. He found out everything was, like, cardboard, cardboard and everything yeah. was just a facade. That's kind of, like that's the idea that I was wondering like yeah no that's like that <laughs> well do you no. think that's where that comes from though like that movie or do you oh just yeah I'm sure it I'm even if it is bad I'm sure it's not as bad as we think right, because right. we're fed to believe it's bad right? yeah so I guess like one thing that I could premise this by saying is there was like a scholar I forget his fucking name but he was saying that like anti communism <laughs> is the unofficial religion of the United States so. Uh, like basically, That's a good way to put it. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so like, and I, like, you know, like, once you start like thinking about, it, like, you start noticing that's like in everyday, like, just interactions or just like media that has like is like not even political. It's just like the idea that like communism is bad or unspeakable, and that communist countries are like the worst fucking places, like dystopian nightmares. Like, it's just like it's just part of our everyday language that we just kind of like even, take it for granted yeah, even if you're like not that's into crazy. politics like if you watch that 70s show red will spot off like commie bastards and shit yeah, like that. yeah just, that's true yeah it's yeah. yeah it's yeah so um yeah so north korea uh and very interesting history very com complicated history uh they were basically like colonized for hundreds of years by uh different groups colonized frequently by japan every time japan would like launch an invasion of mainland Asia, they would always come in uh, through Korea. Hmm. Uh, so so Korea has like this long history of sort of like anti-colonial struggles of like fighting foreign invaders and uh, trying to like establish a homeland and like, you know, like a, a sense of national identity. Uh, and that like carries through to today. So a lot of like our sort of like perceptions in North Korea where it seems like so hyper-nationalistic and kind of crazy and everyone like worships their leader, like a lot of that is like a genuine reflection of them constantly being conquered and occupied and just like completely devastated by outside. Like other North. Yeah, yeah. So, so Japan and also yeah. the United States during the Korean War. Um, there was, there were, so during the Korean War, which started, uh, I mean, I don't like really want to get into the super weeks because I also like, <laughs> This isn't like my area of history that I study, so I'm not like an expert. Um, but basically, the, the the Korean War happened between like the the communist North and the like the U.S. support in the South, and the United States like intervened on behalf of South Korea. And fighter pilots, at, like two years into the war, fighter pilots were complaining that there was no targets left in North Korea to destroy because wow. they had fucking devastated every single structure. They had killed like tens of thousands of just like innocent civilians, just like That's devastated right. the entire country. Um, and then eventually they brokered a peace, uh, which like lasted until like very recently when they actually like formalized like an end to the war, which was a big deal. Um, was that last year? Or 2017? I, yeah, it was recent. I don't know exactly the year. <clears throat> like that was like a big fucking deal. Like, unific like there's actually like a lot of stuff exciting, like towards like normalizing relations and, and stuff like that. Um, but I think one thing that's like really important is that uh, for all of Korean history, like the north part of Korea is super, super mountainous. There's not a lot of like farmland. It's not very productive for agriculture. Huh. And so, so the Korean continent, like the southern part of the, con or, yeah, not the peninsula had always been sort of like the breadbasket of the country. That's where mm -hmm. they did all the farming. And then once North Korea was divided, Basically, everyone, or Korea was about it. everyone in the north, like, they lost access to all that agricultural land. So it took them a very long time to, like, develop their own agriculture, right? So we have this very sort of, like, narrow view, like, oh, communism never works. You know, you can't even feed your people. Like, if you, like, I don't, I don't know enough about U.S. geography to, like, make a comparison, but if you just, like, 
cut off urban Phoenix from like all the farmland and be like, oh look, they can't even like feed themselves. So I, like it's <laughs> like it's ridiculous, like it's silly. Um, but yeah, there are so like North Korean like travel is very restricted because like North Korea has like constantly been under threat of like foreign invasion by the United States. Um, like it's important to note too that like not very long before the Korean War, the United States used two nuclear weapons against Japan in their war. So there's like always the threat of like nuclear warfare. Um, so North Korea, like a lot of other former colonies, has been in like a very precarious situation. So they have to be very cautious. And there's like plenty of state documents that like talk about like all these efforts to like infiltrate North Korea and uh, like use like technology and the internet to like hack their system so uh that's why like places like north korea are, are like in a lot of ways cut off from the rest of the world it's not because they're necessarily trying to control their population it's because it's like a legitimate threat from like foreign countries who like would want to infiltrate and uh we know that that kind of shit happens because recently and go why am i What's the country where every, uh, the South American country where it's like, oh, socialism doesn't work, just like Venezuela, Venezuela. The United States like recently like launched cyber attacks against uh, Venezuelan's like power grid and infrastructure and really? they got the power turned off. Hmm. Yeah, and there's like the all these country? like, uh, I think parts of it, like, hmm. like, like major urban parts. Because hmm. like the United States was like supporting a, a coup effort to take over the government and by like t like taking out the power, you know, like it makes the government like look bad and corrupt and incompetent. Uh, even though there's like all these like state like public state department memos of like the United States like talking and strategizing about using like hacking to attack infrastructure to like help destabilize like regimes they don't like. So, in a lot of ways, like North Korea like does seem kind of like a paranoid place. But the the things that they have concerns about are like legitimate things. And because the United States has killed tens of thousands of like Korean citizens and bombed their country to shit, like it seems like in that context, it seems a little understandable why they might be weary of like Americans just showing up and be like, uh, North Korea, <laughs> let's go check it out, you know? Like yeah. these fucking frat bros who like think it's gonna be like fun to like expose like the, the evil yeah, Korean so. menace. Wow. Uh, so to get to your question, Colin. Um, is North Korea, like, a state, like, right, like, are all these to tours, like, staged? Because, you're right, a lot of tours who go... Because they don't let anyone, their, like, just anyone in the country, like, even from America, you have to have, like, a signed document from a U.S. official or something like that to get, even get in there, right? Yeah, like, you yeah. Can't just, you can't just go there. Yeah, right? um, during his presidency, Trump, like, banned, actually, all, all travel to North Korea for Americans. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, um, currently? Yeah, yeah, so you actually, yeah, you can't go there legally. I think Canada, ex like, recently extended the same policy. Oh, well. So um, if you wanted to go, you'd have to go to, like, Mexico and then go there or something like that? Yeah, and, like, hope that the State Department maybe, like, doesn't find out. I'm, I'm oh, not really? sure. Yeah, like, oh, they, wow. yeah. Um, you know, like, that kind of raises questions. Like, hmm, why, maybe, you know, <laughs> that you have these waves of people, uh, like, this delegation, uh, the Answer Coalition, so they're, like, anti-war activists and, and stuff. They... So this is the group that uh, John, Mike, one of the Preisner brothers, like went along with. Um, another guy who was on the trip, uh, Dr. Derek Ford, he's a philosophy professor. They um, worked with uh, a, like an activist guy who's, who lives in South Korea, who speaks Korean, who is like for peace, for reunification. Uh, the North Korean government gave them permission to travel freely all around the country. So, um, like, if you're interested, like, John Preisner on his Facebook page, he has, like, this huge, like, Facebook photo album that's public of, like, just all these photos he took traveling around North Korea. Mm -hmm. He's like, we didn't just stay in Pyongyang, right? Like, this is the narrative that we're fed. Like, tourists go there, they stay in the capital, they stay in Pyongyang, everything's kind of performative, and they put on this spectacle, like, everything's fine, right? And that, oh, like, if you, if you talk to tourists, you have this script, and, you know, like, everything, you know, and... Part of what that does is it creates like this facade where like you won't even believe anything about North Korea. Like if anyone tells you like, oh maybe it's not like that, it gives you sort of, like it gives you like this defense mechanism to like never believe anything positive yeah. about mm -hmm. it. I mean, there's a lot of history in the U.S. of like propaganda and or like making a, a 
large amount of people believe a certain way about something like after 9-11 people believe anyone with like a head wrap or whatever was a terrorist when yeah it's obviously not true yeah but it's like that same kind of mentality i never thought about that That's yeah true. yeah it's, it's like how, like how we were just talking about how almost like nine day after 9-11 you'd notice like things were very different yeah you know and that's definitely one of the things true like people being like super racist against anyone from the Middle East. I'm sure. I'm sure there was a lot of stuff before that. But it, I wasn't. I wasn't old enough to probably recognize it. But just because like we had had the Iraq War and stuff like or similar wars like that before Desert Storm and whatnot in the '90s, right? Yeah, 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 the 90s? yeah. Yeah, but because this was like the an attack on American soil. Yeah, yeah, it has a really big effect. There was. I was reading something recently that said um, that incidents of like racially motivated hate crime in places where Trump had given a speech was like 200% higher. Wow. Because it, yeah, because it's, it's not like it necessarily like creates racists as much as it just emboldens people to like, oh, well, if my president fucking believes this, you know, like it gives you like a sense of like validation. A little bit of a platform. To yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that like so, has a lot of influence well, it's like, on people. Well, that same <clears throat> idea, that's kind of like how um, when Hitler was rising to power, like, he was, I mean, obviously their state was horrible, like, the, the state of their people was horrible, but he was, like, a, a voice that was for the people, and, like, you know, rising up against them, but he found, like, something to blame it all on, right. and he rallied all these people to believe this way, and that's how he rose to power, and, you know. That's what's scary, honestly, like, a lot of the stuff that's been going on now, like, even those, like, like camps with, like, those kids and shit, like, yeah. a lot of stuff is start, starting to feel like we're repeating it's that basically, cycle. Basically, Concentration camps for a little kids. bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a lot it's of obviously it, not <laughs> as bad as that, but it's, but it's, it's, it's not far like, off, right? Like that's how it. Far, that's how the Holocaust. I'm sure there started. was Jewish people who were like locked up like that at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like they at first because not all concentration camps, camps were like work camps and work that you die. So right, and it's like you can't go from like like oh get rid of the Mexicans to be like oh like they're working for us right here now. Don't talk to them. Yeah. Like, they, they definitely had that, like, slow, like... Because when we first found out about the cages and that kind of stuff, you're like, what the fuck? That's crazy. But then you see them in the news, like, all the time or, like, post on Facebook and shit. And you're just like, yeah, that sucks, but I gotta go to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, so, like, it's, it's slowly, it's fucking, like, edging it into, like... Yeah, you could almost, like, yeah. you could almost see in real time how people, like, especially, like, during, like, the 1930s and 40s when there was not mass media, right? Oh, yeah. How easy it would be to just fucking ignore yeah, exactly. and it's like on, on Facebook and shit like that, we can t speak to each other, but like back in the day, they just had like newspapers or whatever, like I, you can't really speak like on a newspaper of how you're feeling, so yeah, yeah it definitely was probably way easier to just let it slip by and hope that it didn't get like bad, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, and I mean, it's the same, in a lot of ways, like it's the same exact phenomenon. What's happening is like people like Hitler or Trump, like easy comparison, like they, instead of like, you know, like they'll identify problems that are like real issues for people, right? Like right. low, low wage, like poverty, low wages, you know, Trump talks a lot about trade uh -huh. and, and like production and stuff like that. So like, these are real economic concerns, but instead of like talking about real solutions or the real causes of these problems, they fucking scapegoat, oh, it's migrants. Oh, yeah, it's, you Trump know, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah, instead yeah. of, like, like, hmm, like, maybe it's the people who have all the fucking money and have all the power who are, like, implementing policies that hurt working class people and make themselves rich and not, like, the fucking poorest, most desperate people in the goddamn world, like, traveling hundreds <laughs> of miles, is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane, uh, yeah, like, it, yeah, like, it's, like, what could a homeless man do? that Jeff Bezos couldn't do. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Like, when you put them side to side like that, it sounds ridiculous. It's Yeah, it's insane. It's really... Yeah, like, a insane. perfect example of it is, like, our president right now is one of the elite, like, 1%. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he's obviously yeah. has their interest in, like, has his own best interest, not not the other 99%. But a, a good example for everyone to see it actually happening of, of, like, the normal class is last year on your tax return... If you had like, if you made like the same amount or whatever, you know, you got mo more than likely more back last year than this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that was definitely the case for me. Yeah, I got like a thousand dollars less this year than last year. Yeah, eighty-seven percent of the benefit of tax, Trump's tax plan went to the top point. Yeah, they got they got their taxes wow. cut. Like he, but the working class didn't get as much yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is like what fucking drives me crazy, they right? Agree, yeah. 
<laughs> like Trump ran on this like anti-corruption, anti-establishment campaign, right? Just oh, I'm not. Right I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not like these yeah. corrupt politicians, right? And of course, like the thing that makes politicians corrupt is that they have billionaires who are paying them to yeah, pass policies. Interest, right? Yeah, that yeah, benefit. He is that the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're just giving, got the money you're just giving the fucking middleman. Yeah, so it's even it's like, it's like even oh, we're gonna get rid of political corruption and go straight into fucking direct capitalist dictatorship by electing a president yeah. who's a fucking billionaire. Like, that's not an improvement. Yeah. That's just cutting out, right? Because, like, a politician at least has to kind of compromise <laughs> between, like, the needs of their constituents and the needs of their fucking campaign donors. But if you get rid of that, Trump can just openly do whatever the fuck he wants because he doesn't care yeah. about, you know, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and it's, like, a lot of times there's the, like, they need that money to, like, re, like, start the process of be being elected and all that, right? But, like, yeah. with Trump having that money, he, like, that's why. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, yeah. It doesn't matter, like, he can, he can be hated and still, like, 100% have, like, ridiculous amounts of funds to... You know, attempt to be president. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. fuck that. No, yeah, yeah. I don't know if official position of the pod. Fuck Donald Trump. Is that? Is I don't that like him. I think he's an asshole. Never I talked don't... about it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I uh, I don't know too much about his actual politics. I'm sure they're not good, but him as a person, I think he's an asshole. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, Donald Trump personally an asshole. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But I'm sure as a politician, he's horrible too. I I don't know. But yeah, he's he's like constantly like lying, like getting the United States into like military conflicts that are fucking pointless. You know, like on the one hand, he's like ooh rah rah, like he's like the most like American chauvinist fucking politician like out there, right? Like, you know, like yelling at these young congresswomen, oh you fucking hate America, go back to where you're from, right? Like rah rah America, but then he's like, look, he's like, hmm, how many American soldiers can I go fucking murder in Iran? How many fucking like, young lives can I go to destroy, you know, getting involved in wars that we have no fucking business being in. There's nothing patriotic about, like, sending people to die for war profiteering. That's not... Yeah, that's not yeah. good for soldiers. <laughs> like, so, uh, the thing... Or, or also, like, cutting, like, VA funding. Yeah. Like, cutting homelessness benefits. Like... Maybe Flint still doesn't have water. I know. <laughs> like, all kinds of... Like, things that you... Would... How many years has that been? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It, and it's, like, there are things that you think would never, ever have happened, you know, like, they, it's like, <laughs> like, when they happen, you're like, dude, what the fuck, you know, and it's like, that never got fixed, dude, like, no, yeah, no, you know, when you go on an airplane, and they, like, give you the whole, the safety spiel about, like, you know, the, the mask coming down, yeah, and you put it on yourself before you help anyone else, because right. you have to be able to, you have to help yourself before you can help anyone else, yeah, that's something that needs to happen here. Yes. There's a lot of internal problems that we need to fix before we can go out and help other people. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and, like, realistically, like, our foreign policy is, like, 99%, like, destroying other countries and toppling, like, democratically elected leaders. Like, there's, there's nothing really benevolent, unfortunately, about, like, U.S. foreign policy. And, yeah, like, it's totally right. Like, we have a lot of shit that like we're messing up at home that we need to adjust and there's a lot of shit internationally that we have caused so right you brought up the migrant crisis right which is really a refugee crisis these people aren't just like trying to like move from one country to another yeah these people like, are like less than over here. yeah like no like they're <laughs> fleeing they're fleeing like intense government situations. repression yeah. death squads like, just incredible levels of just, like, gang violence and organized crime. Yeah. Where, like, people yeah. in, like, El Salvador and Guatemala, like, they're like, we had to leave because these fucking gang members wanted my kid to join their gang, and if he refused, they were going to kill the whole family. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of shit that they're feeling. And, it's, and it's, it's funny because it's, it's such an outlandish, like, situation to think about that I, I feel like when you hear that, you're like, no. Over but it's literally a hundred percent what is happening. Like a hunt, like literally, they will kill your family. They will kill your dog. You know, like yeah. it's not at all an exaggeration. I think, yeah, like it just sounds. You're just like, oh, that's you're just being. You're, you know, like. But it's the same thing. Exaggerating. It's the same idea of that we were talking about earlier with North Korea and like yeah. we're hiding the the truth or whatever yeah sure. like that like they're saying that they're just like well they're here to take our jobs yeah it's like a bit. defense mechanism yeah right? yeah yeah That's... like you don't just like fucking pack up your entire life <laughs> and force your kids to march like hundreds of miles through like central 
America and like fucking risk like getting murdered, getting robbed, dying in the fucking desert just because you like your situation. It was just your last chance. Yeah, Yeah. like these are the most. Yeah, and here's the fucked up thing, right? Like the reason that these countries are like this, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, is because the United States has actively pursued policies in these regions that destroy people's lives in order to protect the profits of U.S. companies operating in these places. Like, that's basically, like, the, the, the basic operating premise of, like, the United States' entire foreign policy is let's protect U.S. business interests at the expense of, like, the lives and democratic determination of people of third world countries. So we've, like, constantly funded fucking death squads, like, dictators, like, the most, like, vicious, repressive regimes in these countries, regimes that, like, mass murder priests and nuns, like, regimes that will steal land from indigenous people for the sake of, like, U.S. corporate profits. So we're directly responsible for, like, the very violence that these people are fleeing. They get here, and then we act like it's not our responsibility. We treat them like criminals. We we take kids away from their fucking parents and put them in, like, indefinite detention. Which is um, completely unnecessary. Yes. It's like... and, and, and not only that, like, this is, like, the thing that really fucking gets me is that there's now, like, been reports of, like, literally thousands of incidents of sexual assault of these children. Yeah, dude, unfortunately, I bet. Like, it's, like, it's, it's definitely a thing. It's just, like, <laughs> like, it's, like, it's, like, all, like, it's so, uns- like, speakable, like, that this shit is, like, happening, like, in our communities, right? There's ice detention centers all over the country. But then, like you were saying, I, like, like, we feel so fucking powerless to do anything, yeah. right? Like, I'm not gonna go raid a fucking detention center and get killed or, like, get arrested. Like, I have to, like, go to work on one day. Yeah, yeah. Like, because, That's, like, we have, yeah. It is definitely a hard spot to be in, you know? Because, like, as a people, you you would think that that would be a very possible thing for to have happen is to, like, you know, gang up and, like, let's go go this together. Yeah, like, like, go ra- we'll go Naruto run at the fucking ice detention yeah. center. Seriously. Right <laughs> now it's Area 51. Yeah, yeah we're gonna go yeah. steal a- alien tech and then go fucking... <laughs> you know how we come back with the blasters? <laughs> you know how, like, when you talk to people, it's like, probably other politicians, mm-hmm. mostly, like, saying, like, we feel helpless, what do we do? And they say, go, go vote. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, I'm, I mean, I know I feel like this. And I might be wrong, I think at least really on do. certain levels, but I really feel like, definitely on the presidential level, but maybe lesser in more local stuff, by a, by a significant degree, but I feel like it's it's all rigged, there's no point in voting. Yeah, because, yeah. But definitely, I, I definitely <laughs> feel that way at the presidential level, sure. but I'm open to my mind being changed, well, at all levels, but definitely to the lower levels. Well, because there's, like, like, a lot of gerrymandering, right? Which is, like, the thing where, like, the sections are cut out. Yeah. The, like, the way that votes are counted, so, yeah, like, for presidents, it definitely doesn't really count too much, I guess, but it's like, you know, what do you do? Like, do you, do you just not do well, it? Well, each like, state has their own, um, what's, what's it called? Like, representatives for the state? Yeah, the yeah, the, the, whatever, they have, each mayor. state has their own, no, <laughs> each state has their own certain amount of that based off of population, right? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. um. The electoral college. Yeah. yeah. Right. Has their own pe- members of that, and our votes are supposed to influence them, but really, they just do what they want. Right. And, and I'm like sure they mean? are paid off. Exactly, exactly. Executives and all that. Yeah. I, that shit happens at all levels. Yeah. In every facet of life, there's stuff like that. Yeah. It, right. Like, it's Not really... Everybody. It's really difficult. It's really difficult. And that, like, kind of, like, calls in the question, right? Like, in the, our entire idea that, like, we live in a democratic society when most people feel like their voice and their fucking opinion doesn't matter, right? Like, okay, so like, oh, we live in a republic, not a demo- blah, blah, blah. Like, the, the basic idea of, like, the United States, like, is that the government is supposed to, like, do things that are in the interests of the people. They're supposed to vote along the lines of the people. We are supposed to be supposedly electing representatives who are going to, like, implement the policies that are, like, the most popular. Yeah. But that just hasn't, like, really ever been in the case yeah. and it's because uh like historically politicians like use their office as an opportunity to enrich themselves and they more often than not just vote along the lines of what their donors sell them to and god be damned the fucking people like right now 
like so so policies like Medicare for all policies like universal like free college like these like the majority of the United States people like support these policies like more than half like even like including like sizable portions of like Republicans but these things don't get passed because they're not in the interest of private healthcare companies they're not in the interest of banks that do out student loans and like make profit off of it and those are the people who are funding their campaign and if you don't go along with it they're going to just fund your opponent you know what sucks about that too? It's it's a lot like it's very like those institutions being set in their ways. Because if they if things were to change like that, where there was free Medicare or there was free college and stuff like that, that would just shift the money into a new direction because there would be more money flowing anyway. Right. So like they would just have to like you know change course and what they were doing and like they have the resources to do that. But like and, and it's so crazy to think that you're you're putting those two in perspective and you're like. With those people having the resources and just not wanting to find something new to do, towards people just like dying and like not being able to afford their medication. Yeah, it's like so. Like, yeah, it was, like it's so you, crazy. If they put that money flow towards something that's for the good of the people, yeah. that means that the people at the top make less money, and the people at the top are the, you know, the asshole, corrupt people. But they got to the top because of the way they act. Yeah. And also, they, I think they are the ones that make the decisions, influence, influence the people below them even. Right. And I, I think there's definitely a point where you have a certain amount of money where you just stop thinking of people as people. You know? I, I mean, yeah, look, <laughs> yeah, like, look at just... the working conditions of fucking Amazon. Workers. 100%, 100%. You think Jeff Bezos would like accept working in an environment where like if he pisses at the wrong fucking bathroom, he's gonna get fired and dude, not? Dude, like I bet you can look that dude in the eyes and just not see anything, like dude, not feel anything. There's you know? like, like how you're saying they feel probably feel they look down upon normal people. Yeah, there's a, an example of that in our own daily lives. The homeless mm -hmm. population. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. 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 Normal people, like, yeah. like, normal people like us, or, like, you know, the most of society looks down upon homeless people. Just yeah, like, true. I'm sure the super rich people look down on everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I that's know. definitely a hard spot. <laughs> like, it's like we're literally doing that to homeless people. We're, we're complaining about what yeah. they're doing to us, yeah. but we're doing that to homeless people. Yeah, that's true. Because it's fucking hard, right? Like, it's really hard to, like, be empathetic. And it's really hard to do it when, like, you're, like, living paycheck to paycheck, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's really funny because, like, I have, like, pretty, like, radical, like, anti-hierarchical politics. And, like, the second I started working in a corporate, like, setting, I, I could, like, instantly see, like, how you could just, like, buy into the whole, like, well, my job's more important than what they're fucking doing and I'm yeah. better, you know? And, like, you know, thinking about, like, going into management and being able to, like, have, like, some sort of, like, influence over people. Like, it's right. very, like, there's, like, oh, there's, I think, like, it's very, like, tempting and, like, almost, like, gratifying to, like, be in a position of like power and like look down because it, like it makes you like feel, feel especially if you're like someone who's like insecure about a lot of shit like being able to latch on the things that make you feel better about yourself at the expense of other people it's always gonna be appealing yeah yeah what, what were you gonna say i'll say i think about that all the time because i am heading into management oh congrats <laughs> eventually <laughs> at some point when they fucking actually start well i am sure. i'll tell you later but yeah <laughs> i am heading that direction yeah i mean i'm in a program for it but I think about that all the time. I mean, I see examples at work or like uh, past jobs all the time of like stuff that I don't like, you know, like behavior, like company, you know, you were telling about your new job, the company culture of it. And I said, I've never come close to experiencing that. Like he, his company culture is very healthy. Oh, really? That's I've cool. never come close cool. to experiencing anything like that. Yeah. yeah and I, I really like, think, I, I, sorry, I, as a just finish my point really quick. As, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're, we're going in a new direction here, Colin. It's we're better than that. I'll, just, I'll <laughs> just take my Arizona iced tea and leave. <laughs> we're looking for sponsors. It's not. <laughs> Should so, we? I'm like, should we be taping things that we can possibly get sponsored? I know. I'm like, I'm like, I should hide my work bed so like I don't. Get it. <laughs> Is that your work bed? I know my manager. <laughs> my manager's like one of like the six people that's gonna be like listening to this and be like, that nah, motherfucker. <laughs> All Why right. does he say that shit about North Korea? I can't work with someone like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, isn't that crazy that that's the thing too? Like what you say on the internet? Dude, I know. That's your fucking real I, life. <laughs> I know. I made the mistake. I added a couple co workers on Facebook and then I'm like, oh shit. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a yeah. fucking mistake. <laughs> You're like, fuck, can't be myself now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so. I don't think it's a bad thing though. What? That stuff 
and social media can affect you. Well, you're saying that because you're going into management now, Colin. <laughs> No, I don't. I really think that. Right, yeah, no, I think, like, yeah, like, I think it's good, like, if someone's a fucking Nazi on Twitter. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, like, it, yeah, but it is, like, just the idea that, like, every, like, you're constantly being surveilled, you know? Well, that's different than what I was talking about. Okay, yeah, what sure. What are you talking about? Literally just if you're a fucking idiot. That, like, yeah, things should be able to affect you in your life, because... <laughs> Unless no, you, yeah, that's true. Things, I mean, have, things have consequences. Unless, you're, true, Jake, unless you're Jake Paul, then it's fine. It's, this, it's the same idea of, like, internet bullying. It sounds like a joke, but it's true. Like, yeah, you're a fucking true. asshole online. You're an asshole in real life. Right. No, at, yeah, least deep, at least deep down somewhere, it's going to come out at some point. Yeah. yeah. No, you're absolutely you're right. You're a piece of shit somewhere. You're a piece of shit somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So you're, so you're talking about going into management, work culture, and seeing things. Oh, because like I, I would have more control over that. Like, I see stuff at work every day and past jobs every, every day where, like, I don't like that, but I don't have the authority to change it. Yeah. 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 So. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really funny. So like, it's 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 especially fucked up because we ha like have a culture of like idolizing like wealthy people and entrepreneurs, right? Like, oh, Jeff Bezos is like this fucking like celebrity, and it's really. Fun. I don't get that because I don't idolize them at all. That's good. I think a lot of the idolization comes in people thinking that they're gonna be that person one day. They're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. If you're like, sitting home thinking about that, yeah, you're not doing you're enough to get your there because you're supposed to be. I mean, like, every successful night. person has failed a thousand times in other things because they weren't sitting at home watching YouTube thinking about all these other people. They were yeah. fucking out there trying all these different yeah, things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it probably helps too when you have like parents who like. But it's not that parents. way for everyone. No, sure. Exactly. It's not, but, but, but everyone for, thinks that it is. Everyone thinks it's easy, you know? I mean, it's gonna, it sounds harsh, but don't be a fucking idiot. Think <laughs> about something. Sure. Think. Yeah, no, honestly, honestly, that's true. Yeah. Mindfulness of all. I'm all about that. But yeah, it's it's really funny if you read this stuff. So his wife's divorcing him, and if you read the shit she says about him, I thought, like, I thought that was done already. They're divorced. Maybe they are. Well, like they're they're divorced. She divorced them. Yeah. Um, however you want to like put the contract. She was like saying like he's like the most. She was saying like he's the most selfish, uncharitable, ungiving person that I've ever fucking met. And when she divorced him, she gave away half of her settlement, which was like. Fucking like millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I'm going to charity. I'm right sure, away. it was billions nice. of dollars. Yeah, yeah, Probably, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, his net worth is he's like he's over a hundred billion. Yeah. And she got half, right? Well, I don't think she got half of all of his assets, but she uh, maybe I'm sure she got so maybe so so her her fuck, yeah. however much. It, like she still probably has way more fucking money than any human being should could ever need. Probably, but that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Whatever. That's crazy. She's yeah. Fuck it. She's not the her husband's the fucking problem, he, right? Like Jeff Bezos is the richest person in the world, right? Yeah, he's yeah. probably also the biggest fucking asshole in the world, yeah. like right next to Henry Kissinger. Um, Who's that? I don't know. Dillinger guy? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no that's fucking Dillinger. <laughs> that motherfucker, dude. I got some opinions about these musicians, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> Henry Kissinger is like a long time, like. Uh, not really like politician. Like he's been in a lot of administrations and like in particularly like Republican administrations for like the past fifty years, and just orchestrated a shit ton of fucking war crimes. It's like directly responsible for the deaths of like millions of fucking innocent people all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Bourdain, he he had this quote. He's like, if you go to Indonesia, like so he like uh, Henry Kissinger like supported like a, a genocide in Indonesia. So I killed like millions of people. He's like, if you visit Indonesia once, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. Because that country is, like, still, like, dealing with the fallout of... Is that guy alive still? Yeah, he's he's fucking old. He's, like, in his 80s or 90s. What, what did yeah. he do? What was his... Like, why did he have that power? He, could, he was, like, uh... He, he, like, served in, on, like, in, like, the cabinet of, like, several different, like, presidential administrations. Like, I think it was in Bush's cabinet... I think he was. So it's in, political, not military. Yeah, yeah, he was in like a yeah, yeah, he was in like the White House. He was like, I don't know, like Secretary of Defense or I. He had he held several positions basically where he was in a position of like political authority that enabled him to like, just commit atrocious war crimes. Um, the United, uh, the UN like Special Council on War Crimes has like been interested in indicting him. For, for war crimes, because there's, like, just so much evidence of, like, his hand in these things. 
but uh, like recently Trump came out and said that they will arrest like any international court judges that come to the United States and won't respect their authority to like prosecute people under international wow. law. Yeah, so if you're, you know, if you're a war criminal, America is a pretty nice place to be, apparently. <laughs> That's nice. America's yeah. It's a crazy place. Yeah. It is. It's wild. It's crazy. Do you think, like, you know, like, uh, I, I was it, like, maybe the 90s or 80s or whatever, when it was, like, very, like, America badass, like, fucking, this is, like, America type shit, like, you know, like, when the morale was really high or whatever, sure. do you think shit was still going on? Like, oh, my so, God, dude, yeah. like That's so weird. Like, basically, okay, so... Uh, like, I'm a historian, right? right? Um, I got my undergraduate bachelor's degree in history at ASU. I'm working on my master's degree. And I've spent a lot of time, like, studying this stuff on the side. Like, I haven't taken, like, I haven't done any coursework on it. Uh, but basically, like, the United States is just, like, <laughs> it's just a history of just, like, constant war crimes, crimes against humanity, different forms of like genocide and oppression and slavery and like all the stuff that we kind of like are familiar with like domestically so like gen like the extermination of indigenous people the slavery mm -hmm. the enslavement of african americans uh segregation just all this shit like as bad as that stuff is like just in terms of scale it's still kind of pales in comparison to the way the United States and the United States military has acted abroad. Like, wow. yeah, like basically like every single war the United States has been involved in, like has just committed like atrocities and committed war crimes. This action. That's yeah, crazy. like during the Vietnam War, like we just bombed and incinerated millions of Vietnamese and Laotian people to death. For that, and their fucking crime was like trying to fight for national liberation, right? The United States had nothing to do with Vietnam. Vietnam was not a threat to the United States, but uh, the, the, the potential of like indigenous, like socialist movements to capture like assets for American foreign company, companies like operating in these regions, that was a threat to the interests of US businessmen who have like a very tight control over like U.S. foreign policy. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's been just like, even in just like the past like 50 or 60 years, there's been like countless U.S. military like interventions and CIA coups just like all across the world. Like I talked a little bit about like Central America, but also in Asia and the Middle East, like just all over the world, the United States is like constantly propping up just like the most despotic horrible regimes because those people like do business with the United States and are saying hey you know this other guy my political opponent is threatening to nationalize the oil industry nationalize sugar production natural nationalize copper mining right like and what that means is that pe like politicians like often like grassroots democratically minded politicians want to say hey how about instead of letting all these u.s companies extract all this wealth from our country we develop our own infrastructure we develop our own industry and exploit our resources for the benefit of our own people like that's what they want to do and then some some right some right wing fascist fucking dictator will come in and say hey we're gonna me and my homies my death squad we're gonna fucking kill all these people you know, will you help us? And then the U.S. will just bankroll, give them arms. Yeah. Like you for like a cut, or like yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They'll like just yeah. pay them and like support them and put them in power. And as long as those people are are killing That's anyone who want to have like a democratic or socialist the like leaning government, like that exactly what happened in Chile um, in the seventies. The they they had an election. Salvador Allende won. He became president and he ran on a platform of let's use the Chilean resources to benefit the people. Let's nationalize uh, our resources so that the, the profits of, of producing them goes to the people. And the United States was like, no, nah, bro, nah, 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 fuck that. So we, so we supported uh, like a violent military coup, which ousted him and then resulted in like the mass killing of thousands of people and protected like U.S corporate interests like this is you know 
So people like Trump will talk about, oh, they hate America, they hate us because of our freedom. No, a lot of places, a lot of countries, and a lot of people have resentment towards the United States because, like, we've, like, literally fucked over all of these countries. And, like, this, you know, like, it's kind of like a well-kept, like, secret. Like, it's very easy to learn about these things if you, like, just read, like, certain his histories or, like, you can even, like, find this stuff on Wikipedia. There's a Wikipedia yeah. page for U.S. war crimes. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> We're not, like, well, in, like, most people's school, like, not, spe like, specific college courses, or whatever, but most people's school, like, grade school and high school, you're not taught anything like this. You're taught, like, the worst thing you learn about America is, like, you said, like, slavery. Slavery. Native American. Yeah. Like that. yeah. It, that's basically it. Yeah. yeah. Hon honestly, I think, like, that's where a good teacher's come into play, because I definitely, I didn't go to college, so I wouldn't have known any of that shit. I never really did my own research like that, but I did have a lot of teachers growing up who were like, hey... America actually kind of sucks. Dude. Like, <laughs> this is why, and I feel like like, like ha had I not had those teachers, I probably would have never thought about anything like that. Because it's such a good like, it's like a well kept little like mask that America has, you know. And to kind of piggyback on that, like the the mask works in like certain ways where like ever most people have like this almost romanticization, yeah, romanticization about like specific time periods like world war ii is a huge one and i even yeah. feel that way sure like not that i love world war ii because it was a horrible <laughs> no, I, mean, you know, fucking, you like, I wish like, i was there world war ii is fucking lit bro no it's like just i don't know i'm sure you guys know what i mean but like, yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's like, like we fought the nazis and it's like, like it's like you know, a, this amazing thing yeah it's like yeah. an action hero story yeah from these perspectives like when you're yeah. looking at it like this it's yeah. a really cool story of like good versus evil yeah but really all this other shit is going on <laughs> yeah you know speak like that's really fun like speaking of world war ii i literally just yesterday speaking of the wikipedia page about u.s war crimes just yesterday i was reading i was looking at it and there was a whole section so like if you like s like study a little bit about like world war ii history like one of the things that like people like to talk about is how when like the soviets went into germany there was like this wave of like sexual violence against German women. There was like all these rapes and stuff. What they don't talk about is that like researchers have found that during uh, the war in the European theater, U.S. soldiers um, raped as many as fourteen thousand women across Britain, France, and Germany. So I, yeah, know I heard about something like that in the Pacific. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Across Europe, American GIs like raped 14 like you know and this is it's not like this isn't conspiracy theory shit like this is it's like proven yeah like this is like real That's research that like people have gone and like gone through like soldiers diaries and journals and look like look, done interviews with like survivors of the war and shit like conducted this research over decades um you know and like like war is a fucking awful thing and when you're like like, I'm sure, like, it brutalizes and desensitizes you to a point where, like, you don't even fuck, like, right? Like, if you're, like, able to, like, just kill people and your people, your friends are, like, getting fucking blown up. Like, it's like, like they sure. don't think they're going to make it out of it, so they do these weird things. Because they're talking they're just just yeah. Yeah. Like, Probably their mind has been altered from all the shit they've seen, but it still doesn't make it right. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's right. really it fucked is, up. Yeah. But, like, it, it speaks to, like, how horrible, how horrifying war is that it's just, like, destroys so many lives outside of the people who are like yeah, I mean I, fighting. I can't I could not imagine being in any war like living in a time where the draft existed I remember when I like you know when you turn 18 you have to sign oh, that yeah. I mean the draft doesn't exist anymore I didn't that time but I remember when I signed that it like scared me I was like fuck yeah <laughs> join the lottery I guess yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy. Well, I can't imagine. I'd be... I can't even play paintball. Dude. <laughs> I don't, I can't. Like, I don't want to drive home in bad traffic because I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> like, I can't imagine. Like, most, like, when you see all this stuff, I mean, like, from movies or even, like, documentaries with actual footage, you kind of just, like, watching and taking it and learn from it or whatever. Or it might be more entertainment-based, like, movies. But yeah. if you actually, like, think about it and put yourself in their shoes, that would be beyond... Yeah, like that is your life. You're there day in and day out. It's not like a two hour viewing experience Ooh, like we're seeing. Yeah. It's there every moment. You know what's so crazy? So it's like you can kind of see how their mind could alter and to do these horrible things. 
but it's not you can't I mean you can't sympathize for it but like you can you, yeah, it's like it's like, like like how I mean, scientists think, looks at you, something like you can see how but yeah. it doesn't make it right yeah. right yeah and, and it's I don't think it's necessarily sympathizing it's just I guess there's a reason for it you know where like it doesn't it's not necessarily right but it, it's easier like I think because it, all of it's so bleak you know, like when you put everything into perspective, it's it's just so horrible. You know that to have a reason kind of gives you something to be able to like walk away and be like, okay, I won't kill myself. <laughs> That's yeah. why they did that. Yeah, and, <laughs> you like, know, like, yeah. and it's no mystery that like we there's a massive like mental health epidemic amongst the veterans because like being in those situations is super fucking traumatic. It's very ridiculous. Yeah. And like especially when you go from like living just like a normal American life, right? Like you're not used to like being worried that you're going to get killed every day. Um, even, even more so, you think that America is something that it's not before, it, you know, like, you even experience it. So you you walk in, and you're like, I'm going to do this great thing. And then <laughs> you see what it is, and then, like, you, you're just like, okay, go home now. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's... Um, go back to being that person you were before you did all this shit. Like, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, there's, um, like, one of my favorite podcasts I listen to, it's called Eyes Left. And it's hosted by two military veterans. One of them is an Iraq War veteran. The other guy was an Afghanistan veteran. He fought and he was in the Rangers. And like their whole podcast is like exploring like, you know, the reasons why they enlisted, you know, the sort of like mytho and and one of the guys enlisted before 9-11. So like he was like, Oh, we didn't think we'd ever like be in a real conflict and like he and he, uh, and it's crazy, he talks about um, how right after 9-11 happened, there was instantly all this insanely, like, racialized language about, like, Muslims and people in the Middle East, like, in, like coming from, like, the top down, wow. like, getting soldiers, like, in the mindset of, like, dehumanizing these brown people, because we gotta go fucking kill them now, because, yeah, um... You give them a reason now? Yeah, yeah and the, it's Uncle Sam stuff. It's so, yeah. that podcast is so good, on one of the episodes I interviewed this guy, his name's Clifton Hicks. And he was like in the Iraq war. He's like, you know, I signed up thinking like the United States was like this horse for good, you know, like war sucks, but you know, we're at least fighting, you know, to create like a democratic Iraq. We're, we're fighting to, you know, overthrow that a dictator. Yeah. And then he's like, and then every day, what were we doing? We were driving tanks into people's fucking homes, demolishing their walls, <laughs> like going in. Do you know this fucking person? You know, there's someone who's a suspected insurgent. Like going, like imagine like someone coming into your house, like breaking down your front door, coming into your house, they have a tank on your lawn, they're coming with guns, they're screaming, they're looking for someone who maybe doesn't even live in that house. You have fucking children who are like, he's like, he's like, I, like that's such a reversal of what you think you're going to be doing, right? You think you're going to go be like liberating people and fighting terrorists and then what you're terrorizing these yeah. innocent fucking people. And yeah. then what happens? You do that to people. And then people who weren't insurgents, who weren't terrorists, they start fighting back because you're killing destroying people. Their lives. You're destroying yeah. their lives. These are people yeah. who, and then once there starts being a little bit of conflict, it just fucking escalates because, oh, yeah. these people are attacking us. We're going to, you know, but we had no fucking business being there in the first place. Like they instigated, you know? Yeah, and we know that, you know, fucking Bush and his cabinet lied to us about them having WMDs, and they knew they did, but. We didn't like what Saddam was doing in the region. And Dick Cheney, who was his vice president, was like deeply invested in all of these like profiteering ventures. And he made a shit, he made fucking like millions of dollars off the Iraq war through just like military contracts and like getting fucking paid out. Like that's what that war was for them. It was an opportunity to get rid of someone who wasn't really on their side in terms of like foreign policy and make a shit ton of fucking money. And what did they do? They killed millions of Iraqis. They threw thousands of just like young fucking kids who didn't know what the hell they were doing into combat. It's just like the real like the reality of war is fucking horrible. And the fact that we have a president right now who like avoided getting drafted who has no fucking <laughs> right he was like born with a goddamn golden spoon in his mouth has never wanted for anything has no sense of like fucking struggle probably has no fucking concept of like pain or death or like fearing for your goddamn life you know he's an egomaniac who's like eyeballing venezuela and iran and all these fucking places like just wondering where he can get his fucking rocks off sending people to die for his own fucking amusement like it's disgusting 
fuck that guy. But people blindly support him. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, and people, like, unless you, like, get into it, like, there's not, like, mainstream channels to learn about this stuff, right? Like, it's yeah. not stuff that we openly talk about. Interestingly enough, though, I think recently in, like, the New York Times or the Washington Post, there was an article that said that our politicians always say respect our veterans, listen to our veterans, but no one's listening to them. The majority of veterans, Iraq and Afghan veterans, including Democrats and Republicans, like, like regardless of their political beliefs, the majority of all of them believe that both the Iraq War and Afghanistan War were mistakes. They believe that they weren't just wars, they, we shouldn't have fought them. But instead of like, okay, well, if that's what veterans are telling us, maybe we should rethink our foreign policy and quit thinking about what's the next war we're going to get into and rethink what it is we're doing. No, it's just, oh, fuck it. Well, you they know, have the parts for the big people. Yeah, yeah exactly. And they, they don't see them as people again, yeah. so they're just like, I need this cash. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and increasingly, like, people who sign up for the military or people who, like, don't have economic... Like, a lot of people who enlist, they're like, I can't afford to pay the co go to college, you know? Yeah, they, they, like, so enlist for all these, they like... They risk their life, potentially. They, like, bang yeah. something in front of them. Yeah, and... which is... Yeah, which, like, this... Like, rich kids aren't going yeah. and fucking getting blown up, yeah, you know? <laughs> like... and, and a lot of those people come back, like, 25% or more of, like, the homeless population are military That's veterans. Right. Yeah. We have... A VA system that should work very well, but is chronically underfunded and understaffed. They never have enough money to hire enough doctors and nurses. So, like, veterans have shitty health care. Not because government health care is bad, it's just because they don't fund it. And people who want to make money off of health care, like, are intentionally influencing policy to keep the VA unfunded, to, like, keep the perception of, like, government health care is being bad and being inadequate and are constantly looking towards like trying to privatize the VA and veterans care so that they can make money off of it. So like we don't give a shit about our veterans in this country and the people who are the most like, like that, that portray patriotism and pretend, you know, they have military parades, you know, like they, in reality, like their policies are like the most damaging to yeah. veterans. Yeah, because they're supporting the people who they, who they think is doing everything right, you know, but is really looking out for themselves. Yeah, it's, it's really sad. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, that's, like, that's basically American, like, foreign policy and history, like, in a nutshell, like, for me. And it's not just, like, for a lot of people who just start studying, like, U.S. history and just, like, learn about this stuff and, like, even just, like, an introductory way, it's like, wait, holy, sh holy shit. Are we? I mean, we're not the good guys. Yeah, not the good guy. Yeah. I mean, you know what's crazy to think about, like when we were when you were saying about the movies and shit like that. It's like when you're a kid and you see these movies, like like you know, I grew up like watching Saving Private Ryan, like really young, and like That's my favorite movie. Yeah, I still love that movie. You know what I mean? But like now, if I were to go and watch like the fucking like something that like John Cena was in that was like super patriotic I'd be like this is the stupidest shit yeah, you know what's going on those are like cheesy though well, is it though because that's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make because it's well, like, like what if Saving Private Ryan was also somewhat cheesy and like a little bit like but we didn't think that because we grew up I don't like, think so because they like well I mean I've read a lot about Saving Private Ryan and it's supposed to have been like super super accurate like okay. they there's like countless interviews with like veterans because I mean, it came out in the 90s so like they were right. veterans there was a lot more veterans back then yeah and um like if you ever watch the special the special features or whatever there's like a ton of interviews where they went about them and also like when the movie came out there was a like a ptsd line built around that movie when it was launched right. because they were saying like it's so realistic like if there's a chance it will like take you back to there and cause problems or whatever. Oh shit. That's there's a, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff like that around the movie. Yeah. That's just like one of the most... Just... But that's what worries me, right? So it's like, movie. like okay, so per Saving Private Ryan was a good one, but like, like the kids who grew up watching like shitty ones now who don't know that they're shitty, like they're just, you know, like there's going to be a whole generation of people who are going to grow up thinking of, of America in the same way. Oh yeah, but you know, a little more modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the biggest example for what you're saying, I think is like American Sniper. Oh yeah! Man. Oh my God! Yeah, there. When that movie came out, is that Mark Wahlberg? No, I don't remember who it was. No, I, I, 
He was like also in that. He's like in that country, like that singing movie with Lady Gaga. Oh, um, what's his fucking name? Fuck, Brad something. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that movie is just like straight, just like go America. Yeah, America, like yeah. oh, look at all these fucking brown people getting their heads blown off for like oh, they're just terrorists. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, like no, uh, you're like it's like patriot porn. Yeah, like that's, that's a good yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It's like this dude with like a ten thousand dollar fucking rifle, like in a different country, just like shooting people on the street, right? Like no context. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. Like imagine like there's like if someone made a movie about just like some like Chinese dude like on a rooftop just like shooting American soldiers. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's real and it's so yeah that movie and a lot of those movies too like get like get some funding from like the State Department. Yeah, like, they're, yeah. like, unofficially, officially, yeah. like, mm-hmm. actual... And another one I thought of that it's... It kind of goes towards my point where I don't think Saving Private Ryan was cheesy at all, but there's other movies, like this one I'm about to say, that was during World War II time that I think is a cheesy movie, is, um... I can't remember what it's called, but it was this... about All about this soldier who was, like, super religious, and he enlisted as a medic, and he refused to use a gun or even shoot oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, but it's, like, super, like, just... God, God, Stupid. God, God, God. Shit. And it's just cheesy. The previews make it look like it's going to be like a pretty good World War II movie, but half the first half of the movie is like just his life, you know? Which, I mean, it's fine. He was a real right. person. But oh. you know, I thought it was cheesy because they made it seem like it was going to be more like a Saving Private Ryan-esque World War II movie, but it wasn't. I mean that's that's preachy for not like not like American Sniper it's where it's right. like go yeah. America this is like God rules. Sure. <laughs> yeah, the I like uh, I think like the most egregious and like sickening example of like sort of like military propaganda is like all this shit about Pat Tillman. So Pat Tillman has sort of like been heralded as like Especially this great, Arizona, yeah just, yeah he's like a fucking local like legend right he gave up like a million dollar contract with the cardinals to like go fight for his country right what gets left out is that towards the end of the war like towards the like like, like leading up to before he died he started questioning the morality of the war in his journals and talking to his mom and like by the like by the time he was killed he didn't support the war anymore and he was corresponding uh, with Noam Chomsky, who's like a famous anarchist, uh, like intellectual guy. Like he works at MIT too. He like does philosophy. He's pretty pretty smart too. But he's like probably like the most prominent critic of like U.S. militarism and foreign policy. Um, he would like Pat Tillman was like writing letters to Noam Chomsky, and when he like he planned to like talk to him when he came home about like his experience in the war and like like questioning it. Um, and when Pat Tillman died, they burned all of his stuff. Yeah. He was killed by friendly fire. That might have been a genuine accident. We'll never know. But he, like, that would have been really bad for him to have been heralded as, like, this great patriot and then come back home and be like, actually, no, guys, the war's <laughs> fucked up. Like, no, this is, you guys aren't being told about what's really happening. And one of the guys that he served with in the army, Rory Fanning... Uh, he wrote a whole book about it, about talking to Pat Tillman and his experience of like Pat Tillman being di- becoming like disillusioned with the war. And Pat Tillman's uh, brother like recently like put out uh, like an opinion piece saying like quit using Pat Tillman to like justify American military intervention. He like opposed the war. But, like, that's never talked about, right? Like, I didn't build... know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing I knew about Pat Tillman is that he was, you know, from Arizona, and he got killed by friendly fire. Yeah. And, like, you, like, anyone... And he gave up the NFL thing. Yeah, you can just Google, like, Pat Tillman questioning more, and there's just, there's plenty of documentation about it. Like, he, like, he talked to his mom about it. His mom's like, my son was against the war when he was killed by friendly fire, right? Like, he... Like, had, like, a conscience, like, he grew, like, a moral conscience, and he still, like, paraded around and invoked all the time about, like, this example of, like, you know, selfless militarism and serving your country. Like, it, it makes me sick, because he was not that fucking guy at all. But he, like, his memory is just constantly being used in propaganda. Well, maybe he, at one point, he was like that, like, that's why he joined. Yeah. He- 
realized over time what it actually was. Yeah, and that should be that should be the story, not you know like a yeah, guy. Yeah, that's bad PR. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you you can't you don't. Yeah. Yeah, and, and unfortunately that's like more like looked after than like the actual story is like what the reaction is gonna be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, so that's like a really I think like kind dry example of just like how like little respect like the US State Department and politicians have for like actually respecting like the memory of veterans by just like praising them for yeah. propaganda. Yeah. And like every time like a high profile politician does this, like his family, like his brother and his mom like come out and say, No, that's not who the fuck he was you know, quit invoking my dead son for your guys' recruitment campaign, but well, at, that, at that point, he's in, in the, like, the people that are making, hold on, the, like, the government or whatever, whatever entity is pushing the story out there, now, he's not a person anymore. He's just right. a story yeah. that they made up. Yeah. And it's fucked up to the family, dude. Like, well, to him, too, but, like, imagine having a family member who, like, they were just like, hey, this guy did yeah. all this shit, and you're like, no, he was complete opposite. That's crazy. It's kind of suck. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, and we just have no, we have no concept of the fact that the United States, like that we're citizens basically of an empire. The United States has something like 800 military bases across the planet, which is like 10 times more than the total number of military bases that like every other country has put together. Our military budget is more than the next eight countries after us combined. Wow, that's crazy. And the craziest thing is, is we have realistically no, there's like no other country on earth that is like threatening the United States. You know, we're not like really a threat of any sort of like real conflict other than like shit that we want to like pick up. Yeah, we're, the, we're the threat. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Countries. yeah. Like that, like talking about North Korea, right? Like it's so like shitty, like, oh, you know, they're all fucking crazy and brainwashed while like. Like, no, they're actually, you know, like, realistically afraid of, like, the biggest fucking most militarized country on earth that actually, like, killed thousands of their people and destroyed, like, all their cities, right? It's not paranoia. Like, it's a legitimate fucking threat, you know? Yeah, like, we're the fucking empire. <laughs> like, we're not the That's fucking crazy. rebels, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, and of course... We talk about how, like, oh, North Korea or, like, I don't know, like, Cuba should be, like, more open and democratic and stuff. Like, maybe if you weren't, like, threatening to constantly invade and annihilate these fucking places, maybe if you weren't constantly sanctioning them. It's like, Americans, like, why are you hitting yourself? Or, why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. Like, That's not that good that for you. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's so, it's so disgusting, right? Like, these are... Like, countries that are, like, tiny and, like, powerless yeah, and totally, yeah. at, like, right? Like, Cuba, like, Cuba's a tiny fucking island, right? Like, can we quit sanctioning them? Like, wow. it's bullshit. Like, why are we so fucking threatened by a bunch of, like, 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 fucking farmers and, like, just, yeah, it's just So, like, if we were to crazy. take that back, where does that come from? You know what I mean? Because like, America, because America, I mean, obviously, it started, from, like, through British, like, like, Britain was trying to colonize whatever it's and that's what the people that came here like I'm wondering like what what is it that makes America become a tiny colony of like 13 whatever is and then that's what become an empire yeah become the empire like why did not why did that not happen in a different place like maybe like a more tropical land or like somewhere where it'd be nice to live or like something like that you know what I mean like what so made why America, did the United States become a yeah empire? yeah um so, like, before the United States was, like, the big, massive, like, colonial force, like, in the globe, uh, like, Europe was for a long time, yeah. especially Britain. Like, Britain had, like, at one, at one point, it must have been during the 19th century, Britain, like, had colonized more than half of the world's land mass. Like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's like, that, like, those fucking tiny little assholes on that little island in Britain... But like, like half of the landmass in the entire world. No, in the entire world. But like they didn't touch the U.S. Or are you talking about? Like, like they hit, like yeah, like during like probably I don't know. Like what era are you talking about? Uh, because <laughs> uh, up to a certain point, they didn't even know there was existed. no U.S. No, yeah. no, it was at like it was it would have been like like probably after yeah after the Revolutionary War <laughs> like we like like the 
like Britain controlled just like massive parts of Africa, Asia, mm -hmm. India, um, Europe, like yeah, just yeah, and like like you're a bit like bit, like you're carved up all of Africa. Like going into World War One, there was like one tiny part of Africa that wasn't colonized by either Britain or France or Portugal or one of the European countries. Like basically, there was like a period, like basically at like the end of the eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, like Europe controlled most of the world and most mm -hmm. of the world's resources. That's why Europe is and the United States are as wealthy as they are today, and so many other places are so poor. It has nothing to do with us being inherently more industrious. It's not because we have capitalism and they're all primitive. It's because we like literally spent like centuries stealing all of their wealth and all of their people and all of their labor and developed our own countries and our own economies on that plunder. And then once we moved into the modern era where we're not, we don't have direct colonialism, but we have something that like scholars call like neo-colonialism, like sort of like economic financial banking colonialism where mm -hmm. these poor countries in order to develop, they take out loans and they have to like cooperate with like US companies. And even today there's billions and trillions of dollars more amount of wealth flowing out of like Africa than there is going in through aid, right? We give a little bit of aid mm -hmm. and then we extract a shit ton of wealth through resources. And like this is still going on. This is why the wealthy countries are wealthy and the poor countries are poor. Uh, it has nothing to do with our economic system, right? Like, like the United States is a very different economic system than Switzerland does or Belgium, right? Like we're very free market capitalism. A lot of European countries are more democratic socialists. They have market economies, but they also have like large state owned sections and they're just as prosperous and then throughout across like the third world you have poor countries that are socialist and communist you have poor countries that are capitalists and they're poor it has nothing to do necessarily with your economic model and it has a lot to fucking do with whether or not you were a colony mm -hmm. or a colonizer like that's basically how the modern world developed economically um in places where they actually like develop more like socialist models of economic development. So in places like Cuba, uh, they have managed to achieve a lot of really kind of impressive social outcomes. Like Cuba has like the highest like rated like medical system out of all of like the Latin American countries. They have lower rates of infant mortality than the United States does wow. because even though they have very limited medical resources, they do their best to give access to those resources to as many people as they can. Like they have community doctors who like just walk around the streets of like Havana and go into rural regions and like give people healthcare who can't afford to like go to the hospitals and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the United States really became an international power after World War II. So um, before World War II, like really back to like even like the Mexican-American War, the United States had sort of started to like become a hemispheric power. So the United okay. States, like all across Latin America, the United States kind of like pushed Europe and Spain out of the equation and implemented like different economic policies and intervened in certain ways to make sure that like basically all throughout South America, major industries, oil, sugar, uh, mining were all controlled basically by American companies mm. um, and that was the case like basically until World War Two, and then after well World War One like devastated Europe and World War Two even more so and that's when the United States really started to expand more like globally to uh, like exert its power and hegemony so do you think that just came from like like the right people coming into those colonies when they came to those colonies and that just sort pushed of. it into that direction. Yeah, like basically That's crazy. like all across like Africa and Asia, there was all these anti colonial movements that pushed like 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 indigenous and like local people pushed Europeans out. And then basically the United States came in and in a lot of places they 
didn't directly colonize those places, but they kind of influenced who was going to be the leaders of those mm. countries, who was going to be in charge. For their benefit, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not, so, and when I, when, when you say, like, for their benefit, the people who are benefiting are the capitalists who are operating economic ventures in those places, mm -hmm. right? Like, a lot right. of parts of Africa and Latin America are incredibly rich in mineral and resource wealth. Right, Africa isn't a poor continent. The people of Africa are poor right. because their the resources aren't being used to develop their own stuff. And whenever anyone, whether it's in Iran or Chile or fucking Vietnam, whenever someone threatens to nationalize U.S. companies in those countries, they just get overthrown. Like that's like that has been a major like part. And then do they become overthrown by by people like? Who are influencing like what they want to overthrow those people like they don't just become overthrown right yeah no like, like so sometimes like the united states will like literally like this is what's happening in chile or not chile venezuela right now uh the united states doesn't like that venezuela has a socialist government that is keeping u.s companies from exploiting their oil resources mm -hmm. um we brought in this guy Juan guido who like basically had like had he was like a very minor political figure like grew up in the united states we basically just supplanted him there and said okay he's who we're gonna recognize as president he like he declared himself oh i'm the president president maduro is not legitimate but and then in other cases there will be like uh a lot of times like military leaders in these countries who are like hey if you back us and give us money give us weapons we'll overthrow this democratically elected person or will support factions right like these places you know like aren't homogenous right there's different factions there's different parties a lot of these places have their own economic elite and most of the time the united like and a lot of those economic elite like are where they are because they like cooperated with like u.s business interests so yeah like we just find out who, whoever is useful and in a lot of cases it's like people who are committing genocide in the Middle East. We supported the Taliban because they were fighting against the Russians in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. right? Right now in Syria, we're funding supposedly like all these like unaligned rebel groups who like constantly come out. Like it turns out, oh, they're just ISIS. You know, we're just giving money to ISIS because they're fighting the Syrian government. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, like, well, just whatever we need to do to protect. And right, it's, like, it sounds like kind of like a conspiracy theory, right? But it's it's really no, it's, it's no secret. Like, you can go to Donald Trump or any politician, right? Like, Republican or Democrat, and look at their donors and who they're getting money from. You'll see Halliburton. You'll see Boeing. You'll see all these fucking He's military kind of contractors. Yeah. yeah. You'll see all these mining companies that have mines in Indonesia or, or wherever the fuck. And they're giving them money to make sure that their operations in these countries that are insanely profitable, right? They're operating mines in countries that have no labor laws. So they're sh exploiting the shit out of people and just, you know, getting away with it. That's crazy. Like that? Yeah. That's wild. And it's not... Um, yeah. That's so stupid. It's just like paper. <laughs> it is, yeah. You know, it's the paper that decides who gets to do more shit in the world it's not yeah and you know that after world war ii like the united states came out like relatively unscathed so we were in like a unique position to kind of expand and like grow up our own like international influence and part of that was like uh you know we were trying to counteract the threat of communism right the whole cold war we didn't like that the soviet union was like becoming this power that threatened like our hegemony so we were like you know like there's this idea that we we were only doing all this stuff to sort of like balance the scales right we want to we want to counter communist dictatorship with our capitalist of democratic freedoms but in reality we're just like expanding our military influence and like destroying countries and making a shit ton of money wow that's nice Yeah, how long do you guys record for? Uh, I think we're good there, actually. What time is it? 9.20. 9.20, yes. <laughs> I looked at the clock and I was like, I don't know what time it is. Is it? Yeah, it's 9.30. Yeah. 
I we're good there. Okay. I was I was you know when I was asking you know like what's sort of like the the format like how do you guys like kind of like do the podcast and it's yeah. like you know we'll, we'll we'll ask our guests about you know like some specialized thing that they're interested in and that kind of like devolves into just like casual conversation. I'm like. This isn't gonna be fun for fucking it. This is not gonna be. This is gonna get. This is gonna get fucking dark. <laughs>